All right, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to use the fur brush settings I have given in the Rex server. This is going to be from beginning to end. I won't paint the whole Rex or do the whole Rex, but I will give a starting off point and have you all work from there. So the first thing you want to do is to go to Gumroad. I will link this in the description. This is going to be the fur brush and the transition filter you'll need to make it uh, to get this to work. So this is all credit goes to uh, Eslar, and this will be linked in the description. It's only $7. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and download the Substance Painter file from the uh, from Zillow from Gumroad. It'll be linked in the description as well. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go to go to File, then you go to Import, or you can open it up through the your File Explorer, and it'll open up to this. Next thing you want to do is to import the transition filter and the brush settings. I believe it's, I don't have them downloaded currently. So actually while editing this video, I ended up finding the three files you would need. It's gonna be named these three right here. Whenever you do import it to Substance Painter, make sure the presets are set to match the name. So this one would be base material, this one would be filter, and this would be smart material. Make sure those match Otherwise, if you import it incorrectly, it will not work and you will not get the, the brush, the transition filter, and the brush settings. So you would need, or the smart material, you would need all of these for it to correctly work. But um, you would have to just add resources, make sure you have it selected to your assets so it's in your library. And then you would just hit uh, import and it would import it into the scene. So what you want to do is go to the body mat. We're going to start with that first. And then you want to select pretty much every layer. And you want to go ahead and delete it. You just start fresh. For now, we'll turn off the feathers. All right, so after that, after you deleted all the layers, you want to go over here and you want to look for fur. This is going to be the smart material we will use. This is what you use for every uh, texture set list, whatever, whichever one is going to be for fur. So you click that and you let it load in. It does take a little bit to load in depending on your PC specs and everything, but I'll go ahead and cut to the part where it is loaded. All right, so once you have it loaded in, it is going to be the default yellow and then what you want to do after everything is loaded in, you want to go ahead and first set the fur data layer. This is where you're going to be drawing the fur. Set this to normal. If you have it as disable, it's going to, not going to look as detailed. So you set this as normal. And then you click on the layer. It does take a little bit to load in just from changing the layer style. All right, so... After that, you go to the fur brush you imported, click on it, make sure it's loaded in here. If you have any other brush selected or if it's just the re regular white sphere, yeah, this isn't going to work. So make sure you have this selected, make sure you're on brush. So the settings you want to do is going to be from top to bottom. You turn, you change the spacing, set that to 30, make sure the follow path is on. And you want to scroll down to dynamic stroke. You want to set this to random per stamp and set the value to unlimited. After this, you're going to go to the hair and then the tweaking. The hair, first one is going to be all the way up. The length, we're going to do as 0.75 and same for the scale. You can play around with the curviness. I don't use it as much because I like a straight fur pattern compared to one that curves. And you can play with the width as well, but I usually leave those as default. Then we'll go to the tweaking. Set the roughness minimum to 0.7 and the shading strength to one. After you have your fur data layer selected and the settings changed, you want to have so if you're going to start out with the body, I say leave the brush size at 10. 
But if you're going to do something small like the face, it'd be the face, the hands, and I believe the feet. If you want, you can leave it at 10, but the, uh, the best option that I've gone with is changing it down to about maybe somewhere around five, like a 5.28. That's usually a good size. So whenever you're painting on the Rex or drawing on the Rex with the fur, what you want to do is have the mirror mode selected. It's on by default, but if it's off, click this button. It just mirrors both sides, makes it easier. But if you're going to be, um, if you're gonna be using the fur brush, you want to follow the fur direction. So on the face, for example, it would go from the tip of the nose back and down behind the neck all the way to the, the base. And then for the, for the neck, it would flow from the chin and go down to the neck and go down the chest. Pretty much everything is going to be going in a downward direction. As for the arms, you'll have it go from the neck to the hands and underneath here, you would have it transition to here. You would have both ends from back here meet. And then for the armpit area to the palm of the hand, you would just go this direction. But for right now, we're gonna start with the face. Pretty much just following a backwards direction from the tip of the nose to the back of the head. And if you do get inside the mouth, like I did, for example, after you paint the fur on the face, you can go ahead and go in with the eraser tool and erase whatever you need to. It is a tedious process to do, but if uh, the more time you take to get every direction right, every part of the face right to blend well, it is gonna look a lot better. And if you don't like how it's mirroring on both sides, you can go ahead and turn off the mirror mode and go ahead and cover up a, that line essentially if it looks too symmetrical. this tutorial I will only be doing the head as doing the whole body would take quite a bit but this process does work across all avatars it is the exact same process so we're gonna stop that part for now so generally you would want to do the whole body in one go and have the body completely done before you jump onto the color. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go straight to color because I do not want to take the time to airbrush a whole Rex when I already have a template saved. So after you have used the fur data layer and have painted potentially the whole body, what you want to do is go to the base color. You want to set this to the base color of your avatar. For example, I have one already selected for my avatar. But you, generally, you want to use the color that you would see more on your avatar that would be at the very bottom. The next layer is the color Arial. Arial? Arial? Don't know how to pronounce it. So, these two layers have black masks on them. You can select the color and then you have the masks to paint that color on. 
For this tutorial, we will change this color to, let's see, we're gonna do a white. Anytime you select a black mask on one of these layers, make sure to have the fur brush selected. And as well as put the settings back to what we had them as when we did the fur brush. Sadly, it does not save, as well as opening up new projects and using the fur brush again, does not save these settings, these numbers I'm putting in. I will have a, a link to the photo and screenshot of all the settings that I use, so you could easily save it, as well as follow along with this tutorial if you don't want to save the photo. All right, so once you have these settings on the brush for the fur brush and you're ready to paint the color you want, go ahead and select the black mask, adjust the brush size down, and we're gonna go ahead and color around the eye. Now you'll notice that you can still see the orange through the white on this fur pattern. We will get to the transition settings, which is one of the ones you imported down here. And that is how we're gonna adjust the, the opacity, the fur strength, everything like that. So once you have your basic layout of the color you want above your base color, go ahead and go to the fur brush transition filter right here, click on this. And the three main things you will be adjusting is going to be these three sliders. The settings I use change. They vary on what color I'm using. But more than likely, nine times out of ten, I usually have these pretty low. And these are all just adjustable to what you like. What, how you're, you want the color to look on your fur. The lower you go for the full color cutoff is going to make it look more pixelated on the edges. The higher you go is going to make it look more feathered and low opacity. I generally like to keep mine around these, but they do change depending on each color in each layer. And if you would like to have more layers instead of just the two that are included with the fur brush, go ahead and before you adjust anything or color anything on one of these black masks for these layers, you can go ahead and duplicate it. I need duplicate. You uh, click on duplicate or do control D and do as many layers as you need to. If you do accidentally paint on both layers and don't want to undo, all you would have to do is to create a new fill layer and then right click on it. You would add a black mask to mask the color out. And then you would add the filter for the transition filter. You would hit where it says no filter selected. You select that and the fur brush transition filter should pop up right here. Click on this. You obviously get the, same, the default settings. The only thing you would need to change after you select it is the fur height. You'd sl select that, go to anchor points and click fur data, which is gonna be this layer. After that, you have a completely new layer you could pretty much use from scratch if you have not duplicated the two layers that are included and you've already drawn on them. But for now, I'll delete that layer. In terms of erasing, not too much settings are used for erasing. The only thing I change is just the size and the hardness, depending if I want a sharp color or if I wanted a faded edge. 
So anything with a hardness of one is gonna be pixelated edge and it's not gonna look too clean, too nice. You could adjust this, I usually keep it pretty low. I never really go above halfway point. Once you have your layer color, the second layer above the base, the base color, you have that color completely on your avatar. It looks nice and everything. The next step to do, you're gonna select the smudge, the smudge brush. Now these settings I haven't used in a while, but they do change sometimes. The spacing you would usually set to, or sorry, not the say, uh, spacing, the size you would set to 0.18 and the spacing, I believe you would set to 0.12. Let me change the damn thing. Hmm. Maybe not. Let's try 18. Granted, I haven't used the smudge brush in a long time. So these settings might change and I will probably update these settings in the given screenshots down in the description. But generally you want to use this to pretty much bring out strands of fur onto the base color. Make sure you have this one selected. Change the size down to 0.12. The lower the brush size I've noticed, the less strength it has. I'm gonna do a point two. Make sure the let's turn the flow. Turn the flow up. There we go. Okay, there we go. So this is generally to make it look like it's not just like this type of white fur was just like spray painted on. You want it to transition pretty easily. You want it to look like actual fur. Granted, don't do these outrageous strokes that I'm doing. You want to have it consistent and nice and pretty small. Looks like 0 0.15 is probably a good size to use. But generally, you only want to do this after you've completely finished coloring your avatar, having the fur brush and everything. You want to do this last step. And this pretty much just makes it look a lot better compared to like something like this, where it's just, just, just an edge. And then now we have a, looks like the fur is dragging over to the orange, which is more realistic looking. And you can always play around with these settings. They don't have to be perfect. They're, um, they're adjustable. These are the ones that I use that I find pretty nice. So that's pretty much it just for the fur brush tutorial. Um, my Discord will also be linked in the description down below if you have any questions or any concerns or any issues that you come across. I'll have my Discord down below. You can DM me on there. Or if you're a part of the rec server, which is where I'll be linking this video, you could DM me in the... Let me see. You can tag me in the texture substance help category of the server. I will be answering questions there and I'll be answering questions in DMs. And that's gonna be it for the tutorial. Um, appreciate you watching it. Um, have a good one.